Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. And welcome to our uh, next set. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, the new Card Fight Vanguard set. Let me pull up the name really quick. Um, the Mini Booster, uh, Mini Booster 1, uh, the first Mini Booster of the V-Series uh, called Psychalia Strife. So um, this set is basically just an extra booster, so to speak, for Royal Paladin and Kagero. Um, just contains Royal Paladin and Kagero cards. It's an Aichi Kai set, so um, kind of like takes into account all their different cards and uh, s like their combinations and all the stuff that they've gotten in the V-Series so far, along with some new Ace cards that are grade fours, um, Novell, and uh, Exculpate the Blaster. So I'm actually bringing you guys the Exculpate uh, the Blaster V-Series deck today in standard, in case you're wondering, in, uh, in, in case you're wondering <laughs> of seeing how the deck works um, and uh, seeing what kind of things you need to be prepared for when playing it and playing against it. So um, with that being said, we're gonna get right into the future fight. But a couple announcements first. Uh, first announcement is uh, I have something really, really big business plan for both my channels um, that as of this morning has like uh, come to light or come into fruition or fruition however I pronounce that word uh, but basically it's really 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 great um, that this is happening right now uh, but I will announce it once everything gets solidified but I'm really really excited about this um, announcement number two is uh, this channel is now on a set schedule of Monday Wednesday Friday so you guys can look forward to videos um, from me on Monday, Wednesday, Friday on this channel just like you can on the other channel. So if you're watching both channels, it's like a double feature type thing. So that's great for you. And then um, uh, announcement number three is uh, I'm going to be doing like a lot of different series on here. I know a lot of you guys have like this channel especially has been like really weird on scheduling and stuff like that because I've pretty much like done videos at my leisure. Uh, but now I'm going to be getting back on the grind. So there's going to be like the, the future fights are still going to be there. I'm focusing on those for right now. And then as I finish up with the future fights, I'm going to start adding more series like real life gameplay and a bunch of stuff that I've like surveyed from you guys that you guys want. Um, but with that being said, um, just a quick uh, shout out to our sponsor, Dabbers Cards and Games. They uh, sh Their logo should appear above my head. Um, they're a great local card store that's focused here in Georgia. Um, they really do their best to like help the community thrive, help the uh, player base for all the games grow, and try to serve the player base um, really like really accurately and well at the uh, very same time. They have a great stock for card fight around the time when sets come out, and then they also have a lot of really cool uh, products from Japan, ranging from sleeves to plushes. There was like a Master Ball plush last time I went there. They also have TVs so you can play like video games and stuff like that. They have, they have already set up there for you like Super Smash Brothers, uh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters, and those are just a few of the things that they offer. So I've definitely checked them out if you live in Georgia or if you're swinging by Georgia. But with that being said, let's get right into the video. So uh, we're going to be talking about, like I said, the um, Mini Booster Royal Paladin deck. Um, this deck was incredibly annoying to build and playtest. Um, and I'm going to say something not commonly said, I guess, um, but everyone thinks, or from what I've seen, everyone thinks that Exculpate the Blaster is a bad card. So I'm going to flip that around and say Exculpate the Blaster is actually a really, really, really good card. But the way that you have to play the deck and the actual deck itself, like getting to Exculpate, sucks in my opinion because there's no uh, really great way that it sets you up to consistently go into Exculpate and get the job done. Um, so what I mean by that is you, you know, let's open up the deck here. We kind of uh, have our grade three Vanguards that we already had. We have Alfred early, we have a uh, Soul Saver, and then there's the other Alfred, which is King of Knights Alfred. Um, and all of them don't really help you set up for Exculpate or anything like that. Even the new support card, Benin, gets uh, Alfred early, which moves your Blaster Blade out of the soul when you want it in the soul, and they don't allow you to uh, move cards from the field into soul, so it kind of just sucks in that way. Um, but yeah, let's get right into the deck, and then you guys will probably understand what I'm saying as you see the games and my explanations at the same time. So first, we have four of the new Grade 4, Exculpate the Blaster himself. Uh, he has two Vanguard abilities. The first one is when it's placed, counter blast one, choose one card from your soul, and put all the other cards from your soul into the drop zone. 
and when this unit um, when this unit attacks during this turn it battles all your opponent's units so um, likes and dislikes of this particular ability likes is that um, you know I guess it cost the counter blast it could have costed more so I'm happy that it just cost the counter blast uh, the only way that it could have been better than that is making it completely free when it's just on ride um, the second part I don't like at all like choosing the one card from soul and soul blasting all the rest because that actually like cripples your uh, your ability to go into like a soul saver dragon play after the turn um, so it kind of just like uh, cripples your soul um, I think they did that on purpose but also probably because the original exopate is like that it's very just blaster blade based so they want to leave you with like you know three cards in the soul or something like that two cards in the soul uh, so you really just have to ride Soul Saver and have a Pongle uh, waiting on deck to be able to use Soul Saver after you Exculpate. Um, but the second ability is at the end of the battle that it attacked, you can put two cards from your hand into your soul, and then you retire this unit, ride a Blaster Blade from your soul, stand, and if you could not ride, you lose. So reasons that this sucks is because this skill is mandatory. Um, so the reason that this part of the skill sucks is... Uh, because this is mandatory, so you can't ever ride Exculpate the Blaster unless you're just not going to attack with it, and you're just going to use uh, its 14k base power to just sit on 14k base power, and you're not going to drive check, which is stupid in V-Series. Like, don't do that, ever. Um, but the stupid thing is that you can't ride this card and attack with it if you don't have a Blaster Blade in your soul or in your hand, because then you'll just lose the game. And it's really, really risky to just ride Exculpate, use the skill, set up, um, attack with Exculpate, and hope that you're going to drive check a Blaster Blade. Like, I never do that. I try to go for guaranteed plays, not, like, risky, stupid plays, um, in my opinion. So, you know, uh, pretty much Exculpates just sit in my hand. If I happen to have an unfortunate game and I did not see a Blaster Blade that game at all, like, they just sit in my hand. Um, then, as well, I feel like this card should have said put two cards from your hand or field into soul because then you could have uh used uh alfred early to call the blaster blade out and then use um use escalpate to shove it back in it would also give you a rear guard attack that you can attack with then attack with escalpate and then shove blaster blade into soul and just have it um on deck but um they did not do that which means that it's a lot more complicated to use this card um next up we have four of Alfred Early um, himself. We just uh, talked about him a little bit. So Alfred Early's skill is when it is placed counter blast one, choose up to one blaster blade from your hand or soul, call it to rear guard circle, and this unit gets plus, or sorry, the blaster blade gets plus 10,000 power, and then you draw a card. So the reason that we run, I was running, uh, I did all night last night run a bunch of different builds um, with this deck. And at, at first I was running King of Knights Alfred, but then King of Knights Alfred actually pulls out a blaster blade from your deck which makes it even less likely that you're going to see blaster blades for the rest of that game just in your hand that you can use for exculpate um, unless, unless you already rode one for that game while you were on grade two so that's pretty much the only way uh, besides random soul charging with pongo and soul saver that you can just get a blaster blade into soul um, so it kind of sucks in that fashion but Alfred Early is just way better in that respect and then also the new support card Denon uh, helps you with your consistency with getting Exopates in your hand and changing it out with an Alfred Early etc. Um, then we ran two Soul Saver Dragon. Uh, this is pretty much just for a combo ender play or if we for some reason can't Exopate we just start playing this like a normal uh, Royal Paladin V series deck like a um, like a standard deck you know. So. You really just want to uh, build up your soul, keep building up your soul, and then you can actually have turns where you have both Exculpate and Soul Saver in your hand, and you get to just choose, like, look, I'm just going to Exculpate you if you have a board. If you don't have a board, I'm just going to Soul Saver you if you're at, like, 5 damage. So, it's really cool. You can even, like, Soul Saver, and then later, um, if you didn't Soul Lost the Blaster Blade out of your soul, or you have one in your hand, you can just Exculpate right after the Soul Saver turn. So, really, really strong. Uh, something to mention is that all of these grade 3s and grade 4s have force. So uh, what I started doing when I'm playing the deck now, instead of placing force on my rear guard circle, I usually place the first force on vanguard circle. And then what I ride after that determines where I want to put the force marker. So um, if it is exculpate, if I'm riding exculpate as my second force ride, I put the ex uh, I put the force marker under vanguard because the blaster blade under that, you want it to be 38 swinging with a booster with a crit that's really really good um but if i re-ride alfred early or soul saver i'm most likely going to put that force to the rear guard circle 
Um, so getting into our grade twos, we have 10 grade twos. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention we have four grade fours and six grade threes. So we have 10 grade twos. Um, we have four Blaster Blade himself. Uh, you know, nothing much to be covered. If you guys watch my first future fight on Royal Paladin, like the deck is pretty much the same outside of the cards that we just talked about. Um, but really quick, I'm going to run over it. Blaster Blade gets a crit. If it's on the Vanguard Circle and you have four more rear guards, which is really, really good when you are on your grade two rush turn. If you can get four rear guards out, you can really put some hard pressure on your opponent by forcing that critical upon them. Um, they either have to like PG you, guard you with two cards or one to pass you and hope that you don't get a trigger, which if you check a crit trigger and you already have a crit, that's three damage that puts your opponent in a very lethal position uh, for future combo plays, um, as, such as like Soul Saver and Exculpate the Blaster. Um, it's second ability is one placed counter boss one soul blast one choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row retire it I usually never use this skill because it does work very strongly against uh, what I'm trying to accomplish with the deck Which is like, you know soul saver. Um, I want to have my soul So uh, also I rather use my counter blast on stuff like uh, Alan Marin um, And Akane so that I can get pluses instead of just retiring one of my opponent's cards like I don't want to do that um, but that's just me. Obviously, if there's a really important card on the board that you need to blow up, that you know that if you attack into it, your opponents won't just let it go, then you can use Blast Blade skill to blow it up. But I never really come into that situation because I'm just trying to kill them anyways. Also, we run Exculpate in this deck. So by second ride, usually, um, sometimes you can just Exculpate them. And Exculpate usually just is a board clear anyway. So you really don't even need to use the Retire skill, in my opinion. But um, our next grade two, four High Dog Breeder Akane. Uh, we ran this in the original Royal Paladin deck as well. It has two Vanguard Rearguard skills. First one is an auto. This says when it is placed, counter blast one. Vanguard Rearguard Circle, search your deck for up to one Pongle. Call it to Rearguard Circle, shuffle your deck. So it gives you a plus one. Um, also gives you a soul because of Pongle's skill to soul charge. Um, so it starts building your soul for uh, Soul Saver. And then also you can get a random Blaster Blade into your soul if you need to like Exculpate or something like that the next turn and you just haven't seen a Blaster Blade all game. Um, also, its secondary ability just allows for a uh, difference in attack columns sometimes, mostly when your opponent's on like grade 1 and grade 2, uh, but after their grade 3, it usually doesn't change the attack column um, that much because it changes like an 18 to a 21, which is not a different column on Force, Excel, or Protect. So um, yeah, it doesn't really do anything unless your opponent's at like a weird base power. Um, like 15k or higher than that or something like that like so it changes numbers if uh, you're attacking into a novel uh, Changes numbers if you're attacking to a grade 2 or a grade 1 vanguard so uh, During the battle that it is boosted by a high beast it gets plus 3,000 power Which means that you can only be boosting it pretty much with Pongle um, or Flogel because or um, Margul because nothing else in this deck is a high beast. Uh, I guess it also changes your numbers if you need to boost with a trigger. Instead of being 15, it's 18, which does change num numbers on things, but you most likely never have to do that since uh, Kane, when she comes out, calls Pongle out anyways. Um, so our last two grade twos that we run in the deck is two Sage of Salvation bin on. Uh, we just run this card for consistency reasons. Uh, this card skill is when it's placed on the rear guard circle, you can reveal and exculpate the blaster from your hand, return it to your deck, and then search your deck for up to one outfit early, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So a lot of times with us running the, the, this weird ratio that we're running with grade fours and grade threes now, uh, we don't want a G assist. We want to have a consistent ride, our first ride being outfit early most of the time. So if we have a... Um, this like just allows for more cards in our deck that we can draw into and not be ride stuck. Because if we get like a Blaster Blade and a Ben on, we have an Exculpate in our hand. We can ride Blaster Blade, uh, so that's on Vanguard. We're putting pressure on our opponent. We can uh, call Ben on, switching out the Exculpate for uh, Alfred early, shuffling our deck. And then we can also probably, if we have a Kane, which I usually have anyways, play a Kane, um, counter boss one, call a Pongle, Soul Charge one, and then you can just call another grade one if you have it from your hand so that you can get four rear guards for Blaster Blade and that completes your like early game rush against your opponent. Um, and I will say, the higher damage you put them at with this deck in the early game, um, the easier the late game gets for you. Because you have your, like, your really strong plays that's hard for them to take at 5 damage, like Soul Saver. You know, even Exculpate is hard to take when they're at 5 damage because they lose their whole board. And then they have to start guarding from their hand. So they're going to start losing cards from their hand. And then also, um, they're going to lose their board. So it's not like they can just recover after that instantly. Um, they're probably going to have a generally weaker next turn. Um, after the turn that you exculpate them, which is something that I really like about exculpate, but it's really hard to get off. 
So, um, moving into our grade ones, we have 13 grade ones. We have four Night Squire Allen. Uh, yeah, Night Squire Allen. We have four Little Sage Marin, four Pongle, and one sort of Hope Richard. So we'll go over these really quick. Um, Allen and Marin, as you guys know, uh, both let you draw cards uh, for the for the cost of Counter Boss One, but they work a little differently. So Allen is when he's placed. You can counter boss one, choose a card with a grade less than or equal to your vanguard from your hand, call to rearguard circle, draw a card, and this card gets 3,000 power. So, so Alan works uh, better when you have cards from your hand that you need to play. Marin works better when Marin's already on the field and you need to play something in the same column as Marin. Um, so uh, Marin does the same thing, except when another rearguard is placed in the same column as Marin, you counter boss one, draw a card, it gets 3,000 power. So, they can become 11k attackers, which is something that I've really grown to like when you have like an Allen in the early game, and especially with this deck's grade ratios, like your hand can get kind of clunky and weird. So you definitely want to take the, any draws that you can in the early game, which is actually why this deck is uh, six crit, six draw. Um, um, unlike my first Royal Paladin build, that was eight crit, uh, four draw, four heal, because I just didn't find it. Um, I just didn't find it good in this build to do eight crit because it's just way too clunky, gets you in too many awful situations, and also it can help you recover um, slash pay for Exculpate's heavy cost of uh, putting two cards into your soul, rewriting into a grade two, and then getting one drive check. So um, you guys should be wary of that as well. So we have four Pongle. Um, like I said, it works very well with Akane, works well with Soul Saver, builds our soul, but also can soul charge us that random blaster blade that we might need to uh, go in to do Exculpate. So... Uh, when it's placed, if you have another rear guard or if you have another unit in the same column as this unit, Soul Charge 1. If the Soul Charge card is a trigger unit, which it always seems to be when I use this skill, uh, plus 5,000 power to Pongle. I guess it's fine to get the plus 5,000 when you're on a grade 2 turn and Blaster Blade's your vanguard, because then you're making that column 23, um, which makes it hard for your opponent to guard that and it has a crit. But, you know, it is what it is. Then we have one Sword of Hope, uh, Sword of Hope Richard. This is also another new card that says. Um, it's a uh, rearguard skill is if you have three or more rearguards, which you will, it's Royal Paladin. Like, unless you're playing against, like, Shadow Paladin or Kagero and they're blowing your stuff up so hard, like, you're going to have the three rearguards. But if you have three or more rearguards, all your other rearguards in the same column as this unit get the intercept ability. So what this means is that you can actually make a column of grade ones. Um, so you can play, like, an Allen and play, like, a Sword Hope Richard behind it, draw a card for Allen and um, counter boss one and get it to 3,000. And then also, uh, the Allen now will be able to intercept for 10k. So that's very, very strong because usually when you make a column of just grade 1s, you're, you're losing out on that shield from your hand. But with this card, it makes it uh, so that you're not losing out on the shield, which is pretty saucy in uh, some situations. So um, then our starter, we have Grime. Nothing much to say there. You know, draws like lets you draw a card when you ride upon it. Classic V-Series starter. And then, like I said earlier, we have 6 crit. Um, six draw and four heal. Uh, four of our uh, Sentinel trigger, which is a uh, flash seal to assault. Um, so not much to say beyond that. And uh, with that being said, let's get right into the games here. So I'm going to be opening back our card fight area for game one. Also recently in my um, Shadow Paladin video, someone asked me if I could do four games instead of just three. Uh, for the future fight so that's what it's going to be from now on because i i don't mind doing that um as long as it's going to help you guys more so um that's what i'm doing so we're doing mb royals one um so game one uh we're playing against kagero looks like the novel version we draw a card um and we don't have a grade one in our hand so i just in turn because i went first and i'd rather be a little behind than like gsis that early so I guard his attack for a no pass. Um, I do top deck the grade one, which is awesome. And then uh, he rides the grade two after I attack him the previous turn. He attacks me and gets Berserk Dragon. I take a damage. Um, I decide to do an early combo and call Blaster Blade, call Blaster Blade uh, on Vanguard Circle. And then I call Ben on and I search it out with Alfred early. Um, so then our opponent uses Nahalem, make us retire our Marin in the back row. Uses the skill of Overlord to Soul Blast. And then uh, he attacks, he gets a draw trigger. I was surprised that he didn't use Overlord skill here, but he chose not to, and then he attacked our rearguard. So we just decided to take it. Um, then we called Alfred early, calling the Blaster Blade out of our soul. Uh, we do check a crit and check a Blaster Blade, so that's great, because we do have an Exculpate in our hand, knowing that we can Exculpate the next turn. 
Um, so our opponent does ride Waterfall, retires our Blaster Blade. Um, his rear guard gets plus 5,000 because it's the rear guard that says whenever a rear guard's retired, you have plus 5. So then he calls Bar. Bar retires my card, gets 5,000, and then gives the other column 5,000. 5, and then he said that he was thinking. And um, I think he, if I remember correctly, he ends up playing this Dragon Armor Knight, moving this card up, and then attacking me with 13. I guard. He attacks me with Waterfall. I take it. Um, and he checks a heal trigger, which is not great for me, but, you know, not awful. It could have been worse. Um, then I'm just able to take his last attack because he didn't check a crit. I ride Exculpate, uh, putting, you know, uh, card, soul charging my card out. And then this is very important. Uh, I forgot to mention this, but attacking with Exculpate alone so that you can have the booster for your Blaster Blade after is really, really good. So I attack for 38 after that. Um, and so my opponent guards for no pass. Uh, we do check a crit putting it all to bin on, making him guard that, and then we attack for 15 uh, with the Akane column. So I was thankful that he didn't have another waterfall here because I definitely would have been in a predicament, but he actually rode Novell instead, and that allowed me to secure the game, like know that I was going to win from this point because I can just PG Vanguard, he checks one, then I can guard both rear guards with a, uh, with a heal trigger, and then I can ride Soul Saver and use the Pongol to get five, and then uh, Soul Charge 5 plus 15k to all, and then I sealed the game doing that. So, um, which is funny because I actually told him that I used my Psyqualia to figure out that I was going to win the game. Like, a little Aichi Kai homage, but um, even though Kai did beat Aichi, uh, I guess Kai wasn't using Psyqualia in this fight. <laughs> but um, then we have MB Royals Game 2. So game two, we're actually playing against Mega Colony, which is pretty interesting. They have the new uh, promo Stealth Millipede in their deck, so they ride Stealth Millipede, don't hit uh, because they didn't check a trigger. Uh, but they do check a trigger when I go to rush them, so good enough, right? Uh, uses Hornet skill to check top six for grade three, gets it. Uh, we do a little rush of our own, uh, and we don't have a Blaster Blade as you guys can see, so I just rode Alfred early, and we have not seen a Blaster Blade yet. So uh, he calls cards. And then he uses uh, the skill of his Vanguard. Um, I do check a draw trigger, which originally wasn't going to let his Vanguard hit mine, but then he does because he checks a crit. Um, so then I re-ride an Alfred early, putting the Force to Rearguard Circle, replacing my Akane because it was too weak to hit. And then I attack for 18, then 26. He uses his Protect Marker, we check a crit. Um, so we attack with a crit, making him PG that as well, which is really good for us because we're lowering the cards in his hand um, by a good amount. So he attacks us for 14, then attacks us for 37, we PG. Um, he does check a crit, and so and then he uses Phantom Black skill, and we have to guard with three cards. And we don't re-ride Exculpate here like I would like to, because we don't have a Blaster Blade. Like I, guys, like I told you guys, like it's a rough life out here when you don't have a Blaster Blade, and you just have an Exculpate sitting in your hand the entire time that you really want to use, but you can't. Um, so we two to pass his Vanguard. He does check a draw trigger, putting it to uh, rear guard. And then um, I guard with only triggers because of his skill. So I top deck a Blaster Blade, which is awesome, because I'm able to finally ride Exculpate. And this seals the game, because I attack his field for 34. I check a heal um, and a draw trigger, putting on the rear guard. And then I shove two into soul, re-ride Blaster Blade, attack. And I think that he just PG'd um, Vanguard, really, to see if I had the Blaster Blade. Because if, you, if your opponent's like bluffing you, and that's the only thing that they feel like they can do, um, then you want to block Exculpate and see after that if they have a Blaster Blade or not to re-ride because sometimes people do that because they want to be really risky and then they just lose. Um, but I never do that, so yeah. But yeah, Game 2 we win against um, uh, Mega Colony. Game 3 we're up against Dark Irregulars. Uh, we don't have a Grade 1 in this game as well, so it sucks. But then I pass turn to him only to figure out that he also doesn't have a Grade 1. So he attacks me with this starter, I block it. He checks his grade one, I attack him with my starter and get a grade three. Uh, he attacks me, um, I block, and then I top deck the grade one. Uh, so thankfully, I blocked the attacks. I was like, if I don't have a grade one in like the top like nine, ten cards of my deck, like this is ridiculous. So I went off, off that logic and just blocked his early game attacks. Uh, so we are doing an early game rush here. We did get a really good rush of Blaster Blade. So he's forced to PG our Vanguard. Uh, we also do check a Blaster Blade as well, so we're fully set up. For the coming turns um he does go into no life king we take a damage and then he attacks us with that super big rear guard 
Uh, we do ride Soul Saber, putting Force to Vanguard, attacking Rear Guard, and then attacking Vanguard with Soul Saber. He does no guard, taking two damage. Uh, but he does check double crit. Um, so I attack his Rear Guard because my Rear Guard can't hit his Vanguard. He rides Dream Eater, um, retires one of my cards with um, with Gwyn the Abyss. And then he checks, Drive checks two cards. Um, doesn't get anything, so he doesn't hit my Vanguard. And then I ride Exculpate. Uh, soul blasting all those cards out using Exculpate skill, and then I play a fourth rear guard just so that I can have the crit basically with Blaster Blade after. So um, I do check a heal trigger, putting it all to Blaster Blade, and then I check uh, another card as well. So then um, I attack him for 20, attack him for 38, and then I attack him with a crit, actually allowing Akane to hit. So I was pretty lucky on that turn. Um, so I forced him down pretty hard. Uh, he does grab a uh, a Doreen from the soul, so. Uh, I PG his Vanguard, he does check a heal, which sucks for us, but, you know, lets him live a little bit longer. Um, he attacks us with a super big column, we uh, choose to take that, and then we block the other rear guard, which is the rear guard Demon Eater. Um, I ride uh, er Alfred early, calling a Blaster Blade, and then I call a Marin, so I attack his rear guard, attack his Vanguard for 41, and then we did not check a crit here, so I actually attack his Demon Eater, which he chooses to guard with the heal. Uh, but in exchange, I don't give him a counter blast, so he's not able to use that, that no life king. Um, so I actually two to pass him on his no life. He doesn't get any triggers, which is great for me because I'm able to discard that. And then I ride um, Alfred early again, calling out Blaster Blade again, attack, and then he gets a draw trigger, which actually really saves him um, because he wouldn't have been able to block my uh, assault otherwise. But uh, now he's on no life king. And he's able to use the skill, so really sucks for me. The only way that I get through this is if I no guard. Um, and I was thinking about the draw triggers that he has left. So he actually had two draw triggers left in his deck. So he actually had three cards left in deck. And he checked double draw trigger, which means that he decked out before he dealt me a damage. So I actually won that game. So that was pretty cool. Um, otherwise, if he would have checked like crit heal or something. If he like checked any card besides the draw triggers, um, then I would have lost. But all he would need to do is check one draw trigger, and I would win that game because he decks out before um, he kills me. So that's another reason why in that deck I just think that it's really dumb to run more than eight draw triggers. Because you soul charge so much that it's like you're going to deck out if we go into like any kind of long-winded game. But uh, for a Royal Paladin build 4, we're actually playing against the new Angel Feather. So I ride. Uh, we actually get a solid hand this game too. So uh, we take a damage. We ride Blaster Blade. Uh, call with Akane. We call, uh, he no guard, so he takes two damage. Thankfully, none of them are triggers, so we're able to just attack with our rear guard as well. Uh, he does ride Metatron, and he's at four damage. He checks double grade threes, and then we t we're just taking all this damage, uh, from his Vanguard because we can. We use Alfred early to call out a card. He does damage check a heal, um, allowing him to heal down in damage, and then, uh, we attack for 38, and he guards. He uses Metatron skill to call. Um, and he effectively heals one damage. Uh, he does check no triggers though, which is good for us. And then uh, we ride Exculpate because he has a full board, and this is like when Exculpate does work because uh, I'm just attacking his whole field. I check a heal trigger. Um, so he loses his whole board, he takes the damage. I re ride Blaster Blade, I attack with Rear Guard just so that it will hit. And then um, he's down to four cards in his hand with no board, so. Then he just uh, re-rides Zerakiel, and the only thing that he can really do, because he has Zerakiel in his hand and three PGs, like the only thing that he can really do, theoretically, is just attack my Vanguard, which was instantly going to get blocked um, with either the PG or the heal in my hand. And then I had three cards. Um, I had three cards in my soul, and then I was going to re-ride Soul Saver, uh, which increases my soul by one because of the ride, and then call Pongo out. Um, and then I could probably intercept with this Pongo too in the previous turn because of Richard. And then call Pongo out, Soul Charge 1, and then use Soul Saber to like clinch the game for sure. Um, or at least make him use all those uh, PGs in his hand, assuming that he doesn't choose to play down any cards. So after that, he just chose to leave, and he chose that the game was unwinnable. So uh, that fourth game we won as well. But like I said, like the Royal Paladin deck overall, I would give it like a mm, probably a 6 or a 7 out of 10. It's not really that broken but it's not really that good as well but i don't think that it sucks as well so um if you guys do like rope Paladin, you like playing rope Paladin, you like being aichi sendo you think you have psychology you check triggers play this deck this deck is for you 
um, especially if you can ensure that you get all your graded ratios properly and still check the triggers as well and not Jesus, like you're the guy. But um, anyways, guys, that has been our Future Fight Vanguard uh, for today. Happy Friday. Hope you guys enjoy your Friday. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe below and click the bell button so that you don't have to miss a video. Um, and then also, uh, if you guys want to donate a little to the Patreon in the description down below, really help me make videos and make a lot of business moves like the one that I mentioned in the very beginning of the video. Um, but like I said, guys, that has been the Future Fight. This has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I'll see you guys Monday. Peace, guys.